Hello, hello, and welcome to the Polestar 2. This is the 2024 facelift model of the Polestar 2. Um, this is a fully electric family SUV saloon style car. It's an unusual one because it's got a lift gate hatchback. It's a little bit raised. It's not quite a standard saloon car, so I'm not quite sure where it sits, but it's unique in its presence. Now, this shares its underpinnings with the Volvo XC40, which is a very popular and rather handsome um, two-door, two-door, compact four-seat, four-door um, SUV. I got distracted there by Ferrari F12, whether you believe it or not, and I lost my train of thought. That's where the two, <laughs> the two came from. I am trying to keep this video one take because I think sometimes one takes can be quite good. Now, you can tell this is the Polestar 2 facelift primarily because it's got the body-coloured smart uh, panel at the front of the car. That's where it hosts the camera, the safety features, and all that other good stuff. So that's all held in there. And the colours of the Polestar 2, they've tried to keep it as kind of Scandinavian as possible. So we do have things like the snow white. Uh, we do have midnight blue. And there's like a... Um, black one, I can't remember the name, the black one, but that's midnight. Um, there's a charcoal grey colour and then there's magnesium, which is my favourite, that's why I remember that one. Um, it's like a silvery metallic, I really like that one. Um, this particular car is the long range, kind of standard one motor vehicle, which means it's rear wheel drive, which is a change for the facelift, because pre previously it was front wheel drive. And very rarely do you see a car or car manufacturer changing the actual layout of the drivetrain from within a generation, but just on the facelift. I mean, that's really impressive. That's just a safety feature there, just telling me that car was going to hit me oncoming traffic. Um, it is a safe car, we'll give it that due. Now, this car has got a rather premium feeling interior, you know, being owned by Gili and Volvo and all that good stuff. It does have, you know, it's a electric car brand that does have um, kind of the kudos behind it and some money and engineering know-how. Polestar themselves designed and developed uh, cars within the Volvo brand, a little bit like AMG to Mercedes or in the um, products that have like Polestar engineered, you know, V60s and things like that, um, very performance orientated vehicles. Um, and I have seen videos of this particular, not this exact car, but a Polestar long range rear wheel drive with a touch of a button, you can turn the traction control off and people like drifting. Uh, I'm not going to do that um, just because I'm not. <laughs> um, but it's worth noting the standard range model, you can charge from a CCS charger on 135 kilowatts. That's 10 to 80% in about 34 minutes. However, the long range can charge at 205 kilowatts, um, which means 10 to 80% in about 28 minutes. Um, using a seven kilowatt home charger, zero to 100% is claimed seven hours for the standard range and eight hours for the long range. Now, I mentioned the aforementioned boot space in this car, just the way the design was, and this car offers it in spades, <laughs> pardon the pun. You can fit golf clubs back there, if that's important to you. 405 litres of boot space, it's very usable, it's squared off. Yes, you lose a little bit of height because it's not a conventional SUV in the box at the back, it does have like an almost saloon looking uh, tailgate, but it is no different from if you drove a Volkswagen Insignia or a Ford Mondeo, the kind of boot space you would expect with that kind of the way the design on the rear end of that. And we do have 1095 litres of boot space with the seats folded down and they do fold 60-40, um, which is a nice uh, feature just to kind of have if you're doing doing all dump runs or whatever it may be. Uh, so this car has a claimed 409, 409, 406 miles of range, which is incredible. Do you know, I was having a quick look last night at some other videos of other my car manufacturers and I could be wrong that I couldn't see things in this kind of price point like the Hyundai Ioniq 6 or the Tesla Model 3. I think they were all like high 300s. Um, I said someone could correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not 100% sure in every EV in the market, but the main ones that I see in the UK, I think they were around like 380 or something like that, claimed, and this is 406. Uh, I'm now going to get distracted by this Porsche 911, and I don't know. I'll give it that due. I, we never heard the Ferrari, and we never heard that Porsche drive by. Um, that will show you how quiet this car cabin is inside from the exterior. Too. You're not hearing anything because there's no engine noise, but even like the sound deadening in this car is fairly quiet because we can't even hear that Porsche accelerate, 
and whenever I heard the Ferrari with a 12 cylinder engine zooming off, which was like 20 feet away from me. Um, so that's something to be said for the car. Now, this car does have the embossed textile and charcoal interior. If it was me, I would go with the full Scandinavian kind of vibe and go for the zinc just because it's a little bit light. It's like a light grey, like a dark grey colour. I really like it. And if it's important to you, this vehicle, as equipped, is vegan friendly. Even the steering wheel itself has got like this web text uh, material, which is great for just, you know, mimicking rather without being rather. You can get a map and rather option, but also throws in the ventilated seats. So if you do want cool seats, that's the way to get it. Um, there's another Porsche 911 mine. There must be the sunny day bringing all these cars out. This car is riding on 19 inch alloy wheels, which does help with the range. If you upgrade, you are going to lose range. And I think a car like this is important to have range. So I would stick with the 19 inch wheels. Um, it does have the pilot pack and the plus pack. So pilot pack adds things like the data cruise control. Plus pack has added the armor carbon sound system, which is great, as well as the panoramic roof that I really appreciate on a nice sunny day today. And if you're carrying new passengers, probably worth getting that just to help lift the cabin and make it feel nice and light because I could only imagine it would feel dark with the dark headliner all the way back there. Um, so that would be something I would definitely opt for. I think from memory it's about £4,000 for the pan roof and armour carbon on that plus pack and the pilot packs are around two grand. Um, it does throw in other little bits there but that's the main kind of um, features that you're going to get from that. So we're on the motorway, you know, it's cruising quite well, we're getting a good range and I have enjoyed my time with this car, I've had it a good few days now, I'm just on my way back to return the car um, to Silverburn, which is the Glasgow Polestar kind of space as they call it, so it's worth um, giving him a shout out to Mayor while we're here, uh, thank you to him and his team for sorting out with this car and they call it snow in the range. Um, and if you're interested in a test drive, feel free to pause the video and overlay to the scan or click the link in the description below. Now, hopefully you guys have found this video useful. If you're looking for a family-friendly car with space in the back for the kids, space in the boot to carry your life, and a nice logically laid out EV, you can just get in and you know where the buttons are. You've got a nice gauge in front, the portrait style um, screen, which does have Apple CarPlay that's wired. And they even have a little carrick hook down on the left-hand side here. Um, that flips around in the glove box if you also want to make a takeaway or something like that. There's a, such unique wee little quirks in this car, it's quite cool. And it does even have a front fruit, front, whatever you want to call it, front boot space, um, if there's not enough inside the car or in the rear of the car. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching this one take on the Polestar 2. If you like this video, please give my thumbs up, subscribe to the channel below, comment your thoughts on the Polestar 2 below, and as always, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Ciao.